In this tutorial, we introduce a Apollo Link State and show you how you can use it in your applications. Apollo Link State is a state management library that handles similar use cases to libraries like Redux and MobX. The library has a very powerful API and allows you to handle local data the same way you do with remote data using GraphQL. If you have used Apollo Client before, using Apollo Link State will be very similar to your regular GraphQL requests. Here's an example of adding an item to our local cart. The syntax is exactly the same as fetching remote data, with the exception of the client directive. We can access our local state from any component in our application using this same format. Here's an example resolver that handles the logic for adding an item to the user's cart. If you have created resolvers on a GraphQL server before, these will be very familiar. If not, they may look a little complex at first, but after this tutorial, they should be easy to understand. We use the same Apollo client as normal and pass some default values to configure our local state. If you have experience with Redux, this diagram may be helpful in translating some key concepts. In Redux, actions are dispatched in response to user interactions with our application. Reducers then take the action type and payload, handle some logic, and return an updated version of our store. These concepts can translate well into a Apollo link state. Rather than actions, we have queries and mutations, which we can pass variables rather than a payload. We define resolvers to handle the logic of updating the local cache rather than reducers to update the Redux store. Let's make these concepts concrete by building a demo application. We're going to build a small shopping application that pulls five items from a fake API and then add functionality to add these items to our cart and handle converting currencies. We will start with an application made using the Create React App CLI and the six listed packages below. We'll also have some components made with just basic styling for our cart, items for purchase, and item components using Semantic UI React. Let's begin by exploring our project structure. Our index file is the entry point to our application, which is just rendering our app component. Currently, we just render a responsive grid that contains our header as well as our items available for purchase and cart components. The other components are simply for styling. This is our mock API. We'll use this array as our available items for purchase. In our cart component, we currently just render some elements that provide basic styling in our currency buttons component, which just renders two buttons that will allow us to change our application currency. Here, we are just adding some styling to the shopping area and mapping over the available items and rendering item components. And inside of our item component, we render a card that displays an image, the title, currency, and price of the item, as well as a button to add the individual item to our cart. Here's our current application with the code base we just walked through. We are displaying the items available for purchase and our cart component. Let's get started adding a Apollo link state. Here are the exact steps we'll take in building our application. I encourage you to pause the video and review the steps here so you have an idea of what we're gonna do. Let's begin building our application. First, import Apollo client and in-memory cache from Apollo Boost. Then we create an instance of the cache and client. Although Apollo Boost already uses in-memory cache by default, we instantiate our cache manually so we can persist it later. Next, we pass the cache to our Apollo client and wrap our application in an Apollo provider. Finally, we want to set some defaults for our local client state. We want to keep track of the items in our cart as well as a total and selected currency. Also, let's track the items available for purchase in our local state so that we can modify the item prices if we change currencies. We provide type names to assist Apollo in correctly normalizing our cache. To read the items available for purchase from our local state, let's write our first client-side query. First, import GQL from Apollo Boost and use query from the Apollo Hooks library. Now we define our query. The way to tell Apollo to retrieve our data from the local client state rather than the server is by adding a client directive. We can now access the response in the same way we would when querying data from the server. We pass our query to the useQuery hook and destructure the return data. Now we can map over the data in our cache rather than directly from our API file. We just read our local state for the first time. Let's make sure it worked. Our application is still rendering the same items, which is what is expected, so it looks like our query is working correctly. Let's query our card information, again importing GQL and useQuery. This time we will query the card items and their information, as well as the total and currency we selected. Since the currency is not a child field of our card object, we will need to add another client directive, otherwise Apollo would try and resolve the currency from the server. Now we can go ahead and make use of our use query hook 
to relay the return data to our cart component. First, map over the items in our cart and display the item titles. Next, add the correct currency symbol and total formatted with two decimal places. Finally, we pass our currency as a prop to the currency button component. Let's check if everything is still working correctly. Our default state for our cart is empty, so we don't see any items in the cart. However, the total and currency symbol are displaying correctly based on the defaults we set up earlier. Let's add functionality to actually add items to our cart. This will be our first time writing or mutating our local client state. We'll wire up a resolver function that will handle the logic of adding the item to our cart. Let's create a new file to hold our resolvers and add the resolver object to our Apollo client. If you have written GraphQL resolvers on a server before, this will be extremely familiar. Resolvers accept four parameters. The two we'll focus on here are args and context. Args allows us to pass variables to our resolver functions, and context gives us access to our cache so we can read and write information. First, we will read our current cart from the cart info query, which we need to export and import. Let's also read the items for purchase from the available items query, which we also need to export and import. The ES6 find function will help us by returning the item matching the ID we will later pass as a variable to our mutation function. Now we can add this item to our cache cart and update our total. To write to our cache, we'll make use of the write data function, but you can also use the write query or write fragment functions, passing a query or fragment respectively. Finally, let's return the item we have added. Now that we've created the resolver logic for adding an item to our cart, let's wire up our mutation and our item component. Once again, we import GQL and use mutation. Recall the use mutation hook returns a tuple with the function to execute our mutation first. Next, we pass our mutation to the hook and provide the required item ID as a variable, which was passed via props. To execute our mutation, let's wire up an onclick handler and pass our mutation function. Let's also query our currency so we can display the proper currency symbol. First, we import the use query hook, then define our query as a variable, and finally destructure the return data. We didn't actually pass the currency as props in our items for purchase component, so let's update that to read our currency from the query we just created. Let's test if our mutation is working by adding a couple items to our cart. And awesome, everything went as planned, the items are being added to our cart and our total is updated. Let's now implement our currency conversion. Once again, let's wire up a local mutation resolver to override the values in our local store. First, destructure currency and cart total from the cart info query and the items for sale from the available items query. This will be a simple example of an asynchronous resolver as we are going to make a call to a live exchange rate API. Let's create a util file to define our convert price logic. We'll take the old and new currencies as well as an amount for parameters. Here we are sending a request to an API that supplies conversion rates passing the provided currencies. We return the amount provided multiplied by the conversion rate from the exchange API. Next, import the conversion function, and now we can loop through the items in our store and update the pricing using the function we just created. We'll wrap this in a promise.all to wait for each price to be converted before updating. There's definitely a better way to rewrite this function so we're not making an API call on each item, but we won't worry about that here. Once the entire promise has resolved, we write the, item, the updated items back to the cache. We also want to convert our previous card total and set the new currency to state. Finally, we need to wire up our currency buttons component. Once again, we'll import GQL, use mutation, and then define our mutation, this time passing the desired currency as an argument. Let's create our hook, passing the mutation we just created. Now, add an on-click handler for each button, this time passing the respective currency as variables inside our function. Next, we pass a positive prop to the buttons, which will highlight if the currency passed from props corresponds to the button. That was a lot, so let's see if everything worked correctly. Let's test our currency conversion buttons. We'll add a couple items to our cart and then click the euro button. Notice that all of our prices have updated. That's awesome. One last issue we want to address is what happens on page refresh. If we go ahead and refresh the page, notice how all the items in our cart are gone. Of course, this is not ideal as companies could lose a lot of sales. Our last step will be to address this issue. To save our state on refresh, we'll make use of another Apollo package called Apollo Cache Persist. This will save our current cache to some specified storage on the end user's device. Let's create our persistence function. Next, import persist cache from Apollo cache persist. We can now call persist cache inside of the function we define, 
passing an object containing our cache and storage location. For this example, let's use local storage. We also want our function to be asynchronous so we can delay rendering our application until the cache is hydrated. Let's wrap the persist cache function in a try catch block and set up component state to track if our cache has been hydrated. Finally, we'll import the use effect hook from React to call our setup persistence function and set our hydrated state to be true once resolved. We pass an empty array to only run our effect on first render. Let's test our finished application. I'll add a couple items to our cart, then I'll refresh the page, and voila, our cart has been persisted and our end user will no longer lose the items they had saved in their cart. This is exactly what we want and it was relatively simple to configure.